The following program is brought to you by Element 14, the electronics community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com slash presents. Hi, and welcome back to The Learning Circuit. In a previous video, I talked about how decade counters work. Now, I'm going to show you how to use one to make a series of LEDs light up in sequence. And bonus, I'll show you how to use a 555 timer to make the clock signal. Let's do this. My inspiration for this circuit is I'm building this robot that has all of these flashing lights in it and it's run by an Arduino. But I'm not very good at Arduino coding and I just kept thinking there's got to be a better solution preferably a hardware solution and not a software solution. And then I thought, I've been learning all about 555 timers and decade counters, and it is a perfect application. So I'm going to build my circuit so that I no longer have to use all of these IO on my Arduino. I can just use one to turn my light circuit on and off. Let's take a look. I'm going to use a through hole 4017 for the decade counter. I'll review how it works. It has 10 output pins labeled Q0 through 9. Pins 13 and 14 are the clock inputs, one active high and the other active low. I'm using the active high clock input CP0 at pin 14. I'll set up a 555 timer to generate a clock signal oscillating between high and low. That gets connected to the clock, pin 14. Every time the clock signal goes high, the counter advances. To start, Q0 outputs high. For every high clock signal, the next output will go high, cascading through output pins Q0 through 9. Only one output pin is high at a time. To make the clock signal, I can use a 555 timer as an oscillator by building an A-stable circuit. Here I've got my 555 timer. Pin 1 is connected to ground, Pin 8 is connected to VCC. I don't need the reset pin, so pin 4 here is also connected to VCC to hold it high, keeping it inactive. I'm also not using the control voltage pin, pin 5, so that gets connected to ground with a 0.01 microfarad capacitor. Next is the RC circuit that ties pins 2, 6, and 7 together and makes up the oscillator circuit. It requires two resistors and a capacitor. This 10 microfarad capacitor connects pin two to ground. Then pin two is also connected over here to pin six. Pin six gets tied to pin seven through a resistor. Since I wanna be able to vary the speed of my blinking slash oscillating circuit, I'm using a variable resistor here, a 10 kilo ohm potentiometer. And then pin seven gets tied to VCC over here with a one kilo ohm resistor. For testing, I have an LED connected to pin three, the output. When I turn on power, the LED starts blinking. Now I can change the resistance by turning the potentiometer to change the speed of the blink or oscillation. Okay, we have the timing circuit we need for our clock signal. Now let's add the decade counter. Here on my breadboard, I have the 555 timer circuit over here connected to the decade counter circuit here. On the decade counter, pin eight is connected to ground while pin 16 is connected to VCC. Since we're using the active high clock pin, we want to enable the active low clock pin. So pin 13 gets connected to ground to hold it low. Then to disable the master reset, pin 15 gets tied to ground with a resistor. The clock signal comes from the 555 output pin three and gets connected to the active high clock input pin 14 on the decade counter. That leaves the 10 output pins. Unfortunately, given how the internal circuit is structured, the outputs are not in order. So to have the LEDs light up in order, the connections to the output pins crisscross a bit. Here I've got 10 LEDs, one for each output. The cathodes are all connected to ground. Each LED has a current limiting resistor, and you can see by the jumble of crisscross wires here, I've connected them to the output so that the LEDs will light up in order. 
That's everything. I just need to turn on my power supply, which is set to 4.5 volts. As you can see when it's on, the lights cycle starting from pin Q0 all the way up to output Q9. By turning the potentiometer, I can make the cycle go slower or faster. Woo! Freak out! So that's how the circuit works on a breadboard with one LED for each output. However, for my project that I'm going to be using this circuit in, I want to use strands of lights like these. So that's 10 LEDs per output uh, and each LED wants 20 milliamps of current, which means I need 200 milliamps per strand. Hmm. Looking at the datasheet, I found that the max output current is around 50 milliamps. I also figured it out when I tested it and it didn't work. A solution to this lack of current capacity is to have each output control a transistor, which requires a much lower current, and run the power needed for the lights through the transistor. I also only want to use five strands of lights, so I'm going to tie two output pins to each set of lights. So they'll cycle the same, but the lights will go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay, I've got my new circuit all wired up here on my breadboard. You can see here that all the output pins two per transistor go to the middle base pin of these NPN transistors. The emitter of each transistor comes down here to ground, while the collector of each transistor goes to a resistor, which connects to the negative wire of the lights, while the positive wire of the lights goes to the power rail over here. You may have noticed that I also added a relay and a button to my circuit. My whole motivation for making this circuit was so that I could control all of these lights with one output pin on an Arduino. However, the IO pins on an Arduino can only handle maybe 20 or 40 milliamps each. On some, I think it might even be 50 milliamps, but that's just not enough for this entire circuit. So I added a relay to turn the whole circuit on and off. Let's take a peek at how that relay works. This relay has six pins. The two middle pins go to the coil. The four remaining pins connect to the internal switch. These two are the common pins or COM pins, making up one end of the switch. They're connected internally so either can be used. These two make up the other end of the switch. One is normally closed while the other is normally open. That's the one I'm using. Here's how it all goes together. The power supply ground connects to the ground rail supplying the entire circuit. I get positive power to the rail by routing it through the switch portion of the relay. In from the power supply to the normally open pin of the relay. And out here at the COM pin over to the rail. The two coil pins would connect to the Arduino, but for now I'm using this button. For that, the power runs from the supply through the button to the coil with the other side of the coil connected to ground. When the button is pressed, the coil is powered, which connects the normally open pin to the COM pin over here, which supplies power to the rail. Okay, let's power it on and see what it looks like. Pressing the button simulates the Arduino signal. Holding the button down turns on the relay coil, closing the relay switch, supplying power to the 555 and decade counter. The 555 generates the clock signal, which is output at pin 3, and goes over here to pin CP0 on the decade counter, causing it to count. Each count causes the active output to change in order from Q0 through Q9, then back to the beginning. I can turn the potentiometer to change the values in the RC circuit of the 555 to change the clock frequency, adjusting how fast the lights cycle. Making it go slower or faster. I'm really excited to put this into my robot. 
But what I want to know is what other uses can you think of for this circuit? Post your ideas or any questions you have on the Element 14 community on element14.com forward slash the learning circuit. Happy learning. Go faster. Go faster. Shoo!